It's now time for What's Up Asheville, sponsored by the city of Asheville, with the host, Mr. Sam Parada, and here he is. Good afternoon, Nashville, and welcome to What's Up Asheville here on WRES Radio 107 FM, a radio show discussing projects and initiatives with the city of Asheville. As always, I'm your host, Sam Parada. And with me today, I have the director of the Nature Center, Chris Gentile. Um, how are you today, Chris? Oh, I'm great, Sam. Thanks for having me on. I'm looking forward to telling everybody the great things that are going on at the Nature Center. Yeah, and the Nature Center, if you haven't been, it's a wonderful place, but uh, we'll tell you more about it in a bit. Um, for now, um, I always like to have the guests introduce themselves a little more in depth, tell me what you do on a day-to-day basis, and um, just tell me a little bit more about yourself. Sure. Uh, Well, I've been with the city now for almost 15 years at the Nature Center. So um, for people that are uh, used to coming to the Nature Center or have been here a while, you know, we've had quite a few changes over the past 15 years. So it's always an exciting time to be uh, part of the Nature Center, mostly because we continue to improve. And that's thanks to all the wonderful folks that visit us, the city of Asheville, obviously, for the support they give us, city council, and just um, a love of the Nature Center throughout the city. That really helps us, and it's a great place to be. I've worked in zoos uh, and aquariums for almost 30 years now, Mm -hmm. Asheville being um, about the fifth zoo I've worked at. So I started in Cincinnati at the Cincinnati (laughs) Zoo way back when in the early 90s, and um, my path has led me to Asheville, and I think for a good reason, because uh, it's been a wonderful experience. Uh, The people in this community are fantastic. We meet people from all over the Asheville area, all over Western North Carolina, and Sam, all over the country. I mean, I think last year in 2022, now that we're coming to a close, we had guests from every state. Oh, that's great. And about 15 different countries. So when you think of the WNC Nature Center, you think of something that's for the Asheville, maybe Buncombe County, maybe Western North Carolina audiences. But we see a lot of people that come visit us uh, when they're coming to Asheville on their vacation. Well, you know, it's funny you mentioned that because that's what I thought when I moved here. And I've been in Nashville for coming on two years soon. Um, and I didn't really find out about the Nature Center until I started working for the city. And, you know, I, I was a little confused, like, oh, we have a zoo <laughs> in yeah, the city. Yeah. Um, but it makes me really happy that I was a fluke and that there was more people actually finding out and coming from all over the place. Well, and the thing that's wonderful is, uh, and then this goes to show how successful Asheville is as a city, um, we're able to support something like this. Not many city zoos exist. Mm-hmm. Um, there, there are some, obviously there's some in like Los Angeles Zoo is the biggest example of a zoo that's run by its city. Uh, but the fact that Asheville has enough, um, interest and enough enthusiasm and enough uh, means and and, uh, financial ability to support something like this is phenomenal. Um, So that really speaks well as to how involved Asheville community is in something like a science center, a Mm -hmm. nature center, a center where people could come and learn about the wildlife of the Southern Appalachian Mountains. Yeah, and um, I went to one of your Night Howl events, uh, your your guides, I guess I can call them, took us out. at, in the middle of the night with flashlights, we howled at the wolves. They didn't howl back that night, so they were a little shy. But um, we got to see them, you know, out in the open in the middle of the night, and we got to see other animals, and it was a fantastic experience. And before that, we also got to sit down through a, a lecture on these animals, and I got to learn so much that I probably would never have otherwise. Yes, the, no doubt. And, and the great thing about the Nature Center is uh, obviously our focus is on animal care and wellness because we have animals that are entrusted into our care, um, just like any other accredited zoo would. But the thing that we really pride ourselves in is our excellence in, in educational programming. Mm-hmm. Um, not only do we have wonderful programs for all ages, including a youth, teens, adults, uh, you mentioned one that you came to, summer camps, things like that, but we try to really uh, make the on-site experience very educational. So even just a, a visitor who might only come for a two-hour visit once a year, um, we're hoping that they'll walk away with a greater appreciation and understanding of the animals and, and plants that share our southern Appalachian home. Oh, absolutely. And it, was, it wasn't it was just learning to learn. It was also fun. Yes. <laughs> we had some laughs. So 
Um, well, I'm glad to hear you say that. Cause a it, very yeah. good experience. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Well, for the audience that's that's out there that has never been to the Nature Center, um, one of the things, Sam, I think that's really important to mention to people, like you said, you weren't sure what we had. And sometimes the name Nature Center, uh, in people's mind, you think of maybe just a building with maybe a couple snake exhibits or something like that, or maybe some, maybe miles of walking trails, right? Yes. That typically comes to mind when you think of a nature center. But we're, we function like an accredited zoological facility. Oh, I want to stop you right there real Sure, quick. sure. Um, you mentioned the credit zoo once already. Um, can you go over what that means specifically for our audience? Absolutely. Um, well, in the United States, uh, we'll treat just our country, we'll look at our country, there's roughly 5,000 facilities that have an, a, a license to exhibit animals through USDA, U.S. Okay. Department of Agriculture. But of those 5,000, there's only about 200 that have actually gone through the rigorous accreditation standards that the Association of Zoos and Aquariums has. So we're one of those facilities that um, since 1999 has been accredited. Um, us, uh, the North Carolina Zoo in the center of the state, Nashboro, the three aquariums on the coast. So Knoxville Zoo, some, some zoos in the area that people might be familiar with are all accredited zoos, which means we have to go through very rigorous standards when it comes to animal welfare, animal health, mm -hmm. education programming, uh, we make sure that you know we have a diversity program that includes people from all different ages and abilities to come visit the nature center. So there's a lot more to it than just somebody who might have a license to exhibit animals, like what right. they call roadside attractions, okay, things like that. So, so like a sick lion behind a cage. For yes, example. unfortunately, and and there mm -hmm. are several of those in North Carolina. Um, it doesn't mean that they may not take good care of their animals. It just right. means they haven't gone through the same rigorous standards that we have to in order to be able to be accredited right i mean just from visiting i can tell that i was beyond pleasantly surprised when i first stepped into the nature center for the first time and i saw uh the different exhibits and enclosures and like the, the size and how well kept everything is um really really let me think that you guys actually do your homework and really take care of everything. Absolutely, Sam, mm -hmm. and, and uh, that's a great point you brought up, doing our homework. The great thing about um, our community, so the other zoos that are accredited, uh, like I mentioned, the ones in North Carolina, Knoxville, Greenville Zoo is accredited. There's some ones in our area. Um, we're a big community. We're not in competition, so it's not like, you know, we're, we're an, a for-profit organization that we're trying to get more money in than let's say a zoo 10 miles down the road from right. us. We all cooperate. So we have a community which allows us to share information, um, to learn more about uh, you know best practices in animal welfare, animal care, education, things like that. So that's another thing that kind of sets us apart. And I think that's something that the Asheville community should be really proud of mm -hmm. because our city council and our community has supported us um, to be able to continue to be accredited. It's, it's not an easy thing to do so oh, right. we have to be able to um, meet certain requirements every year uh, in order to maintain that but that's a feather in our cap for the city to be able to, to say that they have an accredited facility that exhibits animals yep um, and so you were mentioning uh, for people who haven't been to the nature center um, do you want to give a quick overview of what you have sure for people who hear nature center and think oh uh, another hike <laughs> exactly. Yeah, exactly. And that's what we mentioned in the beginning that um, we are an accredited zoo, as I mentioned. So we have we have animals that um, are that live or have lived in the southern Appalachian um, ecosystem at one time or another. So when you come visit us, you're going to see uh, red wolves. You're going to see otter. You're going to see cougar, bobcat, gray wolves, black bear, all the things you think of when you think of um, animals that might live in our community. But also we have animals that at one time lived here that no longer live here, like red panda. Red panda. <laughs> um, it's amazing to think that an animal that, that lives now in the, um, in the foothills of the Himalayan mountains in Asia mm -hmm. had a relative that one time lived here in, in the Asheville area. Um, but it's true. And uh, about, gosh, uh, 20 years ago, they were doing some road construction in uh, eastern Tennessee by um, Gray, Tennessee, the Tri-Cities area. And they uncovered this cache of of prehistoric animal bones that had never been um, discovered in the southern Appalachians. And in that discovery, they found a, a primitive bone from a red panda relative that had never even been described by science before. Oh, wow. So it proved that 
an animal like a red panda uh, lived here in the southern Appalachians and ate bamboo. We have a lot of native bamboo that grows in our area, so it, it's, it would make sense that yeah. pandas could do well here. I was going to say, um, the first time I went to Nature Center was specifically to see the red pandas. <laughs> um, I think, yeah, I don't remember much about it. It was a while back, but um, I, I, that's my favorite enclosure. They have like the little house with the bamboo and stuff. Yeah. Um, I didn't get to see them very well. One of them was sleeping. Um, they look like a very sassy creature. <laughs> well, they're, they're you know they number one they sleep a lot as you mentioned, which a lot of a, a lot of our, our animals that are pred predatory like the bobcats and cougars, uh, they spend a lot of their time sleeping. Just right. like if you have a house cat at home, you know most of the time it's sleeping, right? Every so often it'll get up to to check out the food bowl or something like that. But um, but the great thing about uh, what you described with your experience uh, coming to the nature center with the red pandas is there are times of the year when, believe it or not, it gets too hot for them here in Asheville. Uh -huh. And that's a cold they can take, no problem. So okay. bring on the cold for them. But if it gets above, let's say, 75 degrees on a day, 80 degrees, and the humidity's high, which is rare in Asheville, but it does happen. It's not like um, we don't have the humidity, of course, of Atlanta or, or Charlotte or, or something Florida. like that. Or Florida, <laughs> like where you're from. Yeah. But... Um, we have an indoor facility that they can retreat to for air conditioning. So mm -hmm. that's where uh, where people may see them in the hotter times of the year. But since we're in the cold time of the year, this is a great time to come to the Nature Center to see them very active because they're used to that kind of weather. Yeah. Well, um, funny that you mentioned that because during the night howl um, with the wolves, we saw them at night. Uh, and it was chilly out, you know, it wasn't a warm night at all. and. It just struck me. I always thought of them as day creatures because you see the pandas in videos sure. and stuff, and they're super clumsy and they do their stuff during the day. <laughs> so I just assumed, but it, you know, you learn something new every day. Well, that's true, and I'm glad you you had a chance to see the nature center at a time when most people don't see it. Um, but what we found is that uh, people who come to visit us a lot they tend to come either earlier in the day. We open at 9:30 okay. uh, for our members, and then 10 for our general public. Uh, and then we close later in the day at 4.30. So we notice that people who really want to see animal activity, they stay away from the middle of the day uh -huh. because the summertime <laughs> in the middle of the day is when animals are, are probably seeking shade or staying uh, nice and cool. So, But um, the other thing I want people to, to understand is that because we're supported by the city of Asheville, uh, people who are who live within the city get a discounted rate to come visit us. Yes. And that's um, a way of, of us thanking people for the support that they've given us over the, the 40, almost 50 years now that the Nature Center has been part of the city of Asheville. Wow. Um, so the Nature Center opened back in the mid-70s, um, and it was uh, at one time back in the 40s, there was an old zoo that existed in the current footprint where the Nature Center is. And anybody that remembers um, East Asheville at the time, uh, rec what they used to call Recreation Park, might remember that there was a nature center, there was a boat dock with paddle boats, there was a, a carousel, a train. It was Asheville's recreation park. People would go out there for recreation. Um, and then in the 70s, uh, when the zoo was kind of getting a little bit old and weathered, um, it was decided that we should focus more on local species. So we did away with some of the exotics. So there was a time when the nature center was the old Asheville Zoo used to have uh, lions and baboons and zebra and things like that. So um, we decided that it would be better to focus our efforts on the unique uh, ecological systems that we have here in Western North Carolina mm -hmm. because they're like nowhere else in the world. And yeah. what a great place for people to come to learn about an area that they might spend some time out in nature uh, when they visit. So well, funny great. enough, I have never seen a bear in my time here in Nashville, like in the wild. Really? Except when I went to the nature <laughs> center. <laughs> Sam, I think you need to find some other places because they do they do <laughs> tend to walk through downtown on occasion. I know. I'm never <laughs> around when they pop up. <laughs> I bet our listeners could, could point out dozens of times when they've encountered bears either walking through the city or uh, maybe when they're up on the Blue Ridge Parkway or something like it's that. It's funny. I saw the video. Last time a bear was in downtown, uh, my mom in Florida sent me a video of it, and I'm like, how do you know this? Also... Why do I not know about that? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I'm literally a few streets down and I missed it. Uh, so just classic every time that happens. So um, Well, you know, I, I think the us Western North Carolinians, of course, I include myself now because I've been here for uh, going on 15 years. But um, we know that bear are prevalent, right? We, we have to live with bear. <laughs> yeah. Just like if you lived in Florida, you know that deer and raccoon are 
You got to keep mm-hmm. your trash in so the raccoons don't get to it. Here in the Asheville area, we know that if we leave our trash out, uh, it's probably going to get knocked over by a black bear. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, well uh, when the day comes and I see a bear, you'll be the first to know. <laughs> I hope so. Yeah. And, I, and it'll be a great experience, I promise, because mm-hmm. there certainly are wonderful creatures. Now, I wanted to ask you, Chris, about um, the different events that happen at the Nature Center. Because okay. uh, I mentioned yeah, many times already, uh, you know, howling with the wolves at night. But um, what else is going on? Maybe not this season, but year-round. What, what different opportunities are there for the public to come and spend some time and enjoy it as more than just looking at the animals? Sure, that's a great question. We have um, we have several events that actually happen during the normal uh, visit day. So if you come on a day like, um, for example, in um, April, we do an endangered species day uh, sometime around Earth Day, where we focus specifically on, obviously, the animals in our collection that are endangered species that are in critical danger of going extinct in the wild. Um, there's also, we have a Wonders of Water Day. We, we have a lot of special events that happen during the day. But we also have a lot of special events that happen outside of normal operating hours. Okay. Um, so, for example, if um, let's say you have um, a school-aged group, if you're a teacher, or you have kids that go to a, a Asheville City School or a school in the surrounding area, we have a lot of school programs that um, classes can come out and actually get a little bit more in-depth information about the Nature Center animals or about the Nature Center ecosystems. Um, we see somewhere around twenty-five to thirty thousand school-aged children every year that come visit us at the Nature Center. Um, and it's mostly group, groups that come with a very specific um, educational goal in mind. Okay. Uh, so, for example, third graders really focus on life cycles. Um, so a lot of teachers that teach science yep. want to come to the Nature Center to talk about things like amphibian life cycle versus a bird's life cycle versus an insect's life cycle. And what a great place to come to, to use a living laboratory like the Nature Center. But for the people that are just um, casual visitors, we have uh, some really cool special events. Four times a year, um, and it's, it's always in May, June, July, and August, those four months, we have a program called Brews and Bears, which is an after-hour program where we partner with a local brewery to provide um, different unique brews, the brew part, Mm -hmm. so that you can come to the Nature Center and view our bears at the same time. But it's an after-hours event, and and they're very popular, and it gives people the chance to see the Nature Center uh, later in the day, especially in the warmer months, the months I mentioned before, May, June, July, and August, when during the day it might be a little too hot. You get to come, uh, let's say, 5 o'clock to 8 o'clock and really enjoy a cooler time at the Nature Center with family, friends, and our animals, of course. And if you get a chance to go to the Nature Center at night, it's a completely different experience, and it's fantastic. Yes, it is. Absolutely. Yes, it is. Especially if you go with a big group of people. Um, There's just something about the animals at night that I I guess it makes them more... um, friendly or more um, brave to go see you? Well, you know, um, it's interesting you mentioned that, Sam, because a lot of the animals that live at the Nature Center are much more active at night. Yeah. Um, they might be nocturnal. Like, for example, with the the, um, the foxes. Yes. Uh, we have two species of fox at the Nature Center. Uh, they tend to be much more active at dawn and dusk, not during the hot part of the day yeah. or during the nighttime hours because it's easier for them to hunt. It's not as hot. The competition with other animals isn't as high, so they've adapted their lifestyle to be nocturnal. Um, so it's it's uh, it's interesting to see animals when they're active yep. uh, at different times. Everybody, of course, we're active during the day, right, for the most part. Yes. Unless you're a college <laughs> student, then you're active mostly at night. Yeah. <laughs> but um, but for the people that are active during the day, it's hard for us to think that nighttime is is the is the active period for a lot of our animals in our region. Mm-hmm. Oh, yes, the funniest thing happened uh, when I went at night. We have the the big cat, the mountain lion. Yes. Uh, yeah, and he just walked in front of me. I was maybe standing three feet away from this big cat, and it looks at me, and it just goes, meow. (laughs) (laughs) And I could not, I had to take a look again, like, I thought you would say something like... Yeah, roar or something. Roar. (laughs) (laughs) Or not a house cat, meow, that was the funniest thing. And again, something that I just, you know, I'll, I'll never forget that. Yeah. Because it's what an such experience! A, it is, yeah. yeah. You know, you, you're seeing this big animal, so much bigger in person, um, and it's just an amazing, yeah, it's an amazing experience. Highly recommend going uh, if you haven't been. If you have been in Borneo a long time, go again. 
it's, it's worth it. Well, and I think, Sam, too, a lot of people um, see the Nature Center, the surface of the Nature Center, right, by v- visiting and seeing our exhibits. Uh, but there's so much that goes on behind the scenes. As we talked about in the beginning, um, what makes us an accredited facility is our vet program and our animal welfare and health program. So yes. um, you see the animals um, on exhibit, but there's so many areas that they have accessible to them behind the scenes that the public doesn't get to see. Uh, and we have a, a wonderful um, program at the Nature Center for animal health and welfare. We're in the process of constructing a new commissary, which uh, is really like a kitchen for the animals. It's a place where we could do all the food prep, store okay. the food, receive the food that comes in. Um, and then with that, we're also uh, renovating our vet clinic, our veterinary clinic, so that we have better facilities for the changing demands that animal health and welfare call for. Um, every year, the standards improve because we learn more about the best practices. So um, again, that's one of the things that uh, we've gotten so much support through the years to upgrade our facilities, to keep keep on the cutting edge, to keep being one of the best facilities there is for animal health and welfare. And specifically for um, these animals that are endangered. Exactly. You know, they need the best care and it's such an important and positive thing that you're taking the steps to stay up to date and learn and really offer them the best um, care that you can. That's exactly right, Sam. And, and it's great that you, know, um, you and other members of the city uh, team, uh, whether it be from maintenance or finance or IT, um, everybody supports us. And, and that's what's great. You know, it, it, normally a zoo that's private might have 40 or 50 employees that have to do everything, right? Of course, we have yeah. ex- extremely specialized staff at the Nature Center that um, don't exist elsewhere in the city. But we rely on the rest of the city's tremendous assets being uh, different departments, finance and information, uh, public information like the department you work with, um, maintenance, uh, public works. I mean, every department helps us out in some way and it makes us great. So everybody that works for the city or lives in the city um, should be proud of of what we all together have achieved at the Nature Center. And thank you for uh, listing the list of different departments that help, you know, the Nature Center. Um, I feel like a lot of people think that the city is a single entity and that we're not divided in different sectors. Um, and I also love that you mentioned the amount of work that different departments offer, you know, the help that they offer to you. Absolutely. Um, because that's how we get things done. We, we, it's not just the wider department. It's everyone, you know, rolling out their sleeves, taking the punches, and just making sure that we're doing as best a job as we can. Well, and a perfect example is we had our police force out not too long ago to, to come to the Nature Center to help us with our animal escape drill. Okay. So, so in the case, we have to uh, we have to drill and make sure you know um, in the in the unlikely event that an animal um, gets out of its enclosure or we have a lot of wild bear that come on grounds. Right. Um, we need to make sure that we're doing the safest thing possible. And and who better to help us with that than the police department? And they're very helpful. Uh, they know our procedures, our protocols, and it's the um, it's just another example of how we are one city of Asheville, one Asheville that supports all the different aspects of, of the people's daily lives. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, we are kind of running out of time, sadly. Um, okay. But before we end the show, I wanted to ask you about the upcoming event that I'm most excited about, which is, <laughs> I'm sure you can guess it, uh, the running with the goats. Oh my goodness gracious. <laughs> That's an event that we started not too long ago, Sam. We're going on our, I believe it's our fourth year. Um, I could be wrong, either third or fourth year. It's it's relatively new. Um, it's an event that happens in uh, mid to late April. Mm-hmm. We're, right now we're working on the exact date. And um, it's, a, it's a 5K run that we work with um, an outside organization that helps us put on. And that run includes uh, through the nature center. Okay. So we call the running with the goats because every day at four thirty, when we put the goats in for the day, they run in from their farmyard into the <laughs> barn and it's become something that the public waits for and watches every day. So now we have the running of the goats and you could run with the goats. So, so it's wonderful. Can I actually run next to a goat? Will I be able to be that close to them while I run? No, because I think the goats would, would so fast be so quick and outrun people that people might get discouraged. <laughs> no, but the goats run and they, they go in their they little have, lane okay. <laughs> and everybody else goes in the, in the people lane. Right. Okay. But it's, it's just a wonderful opportunity for people to come and, 
uh, and be, see the Nature Center in, in yet a different light. Early in the morning before we open to the public is when we do that event. So. Got it, got it. Yeah, best time to run, honestly. Um, yeah. I used to run back in Florida, and I can tell you, it used to be hell sometimes. I would imagine Just you wouldn't want to do it in the middle of the day. in the middle of the day, yeah, <laughs> not, right after school. <laughs> not, in, not in the humidity of Florida, certainly. So. Yeah. But that's something that people could look forward to. And, um, and as I mentioned before, you know, we, we are open and accessible to all. We yes. hope everybody from our community will feel that they're connected to the Nature Center because every community in Asheville is connected in some way to what we do. I wanted to ask you um, before we go, where can we find information on different events and, you know, just the schedules and everything about the Nature Center? Sure. Anybody that has access to a computer or an a iPhone or anything like that can find our website at um, Wild wnc.org and um, there's a ton of information on there about the nature center uh, there's great links back to the city and the different departments that help us but most importantly it, it uh, highlights the different things that happen during the year and gives you good guest information if you want to make a visit out to the nature center great and we can also call you there's a phone number and stuff someone that can answer uh, phone calls there sure is and our, our phone number is listed on the website but i can give it here it's 828-259-8080 so that's another way that you can connect with us. And um, our friendly folks will point you in the right direction and answer any questions you have. And my final question to you before we go is, uh, are there any options for volunteering or learning more um, outside of going to one of these events? Absolutely. And, and again, the website uh, is, the, is our portal to all things about the Nature Center. And we do have many volunteers that help us. Uh, we couldn't exist without volunteers. They yes. help us in animal care education. Uh, we have meal makers that prepare diets. So there's a whole host of different opportunities for volunteer service at the Nature Center if you're interested. Yeah, and it can be a foot in the door if something, if it's something that you're passionate of. Um, if you start volunteering, learn more about the animals and realize sure. that you are an animal, a friend to the animals. <laughs> I bet you looking at our staff more than half our staff started as volunteers at the Nature Center. Wow. So that's a tribute to uh, the dedication and time they put in. And they're, they're members of our community and then uh, get their foot now in the door, like you did. said, and now they work with <laughs> us. Exactly. Well, <laughs> thank you so much, so much, Chris, for this amazing talk about the Nature Center. Um, sadly, we're out of time, but we'll catch you again soon right here on WRES 100.7 FM. My name is Sam Ferreira, and I bid you guys a happy holiday and a farewell. Take care of one another, Asheville. You've been listening to What's Up Asheville, sponsored by the city of Asheville in collaboration with WRS 100.7 FM. This program will re-air every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at 1230. Thank you for listening.